archaeologists have uncovered the secret of miniature Bibles that are about a thousand years old. In South America, they unearthed the grave of a man from myth, and in Germany, scientists have studied the ancient navel of a dinosaur. About these finds and more, see in this video. Hi friend, you're on the Kurtop channel. The Ancient Genome of Escherichia coli when you think of royal jewels, a 400-year-old goldstone is unlikely to come to mind. However, a group of scientists have discovered something of great value inside calcified pellets taken from the gallbladder of an Italian prince who passed away in the 16th century. Remains of early Escherichia coli have been found in goldstones, and researchers at Canada's McMaster University have used them to reconstruct the first ancient genome Escherichia coli bacteria. This is necessary in order to trace the evolution of the notorious superbacteria over the past 400 years. The results published in the journal Communications Biology may allow researchers to eventually determine when Escherichia coli acquired antibiotic resistance. Goldstones are visible in the red rectangle, which contain fragments of Escherichia coli. The mummified remains of Giovanni Davalos were discovered in the Abbey of Saint Domenico Maggiore in 1983, along with those of other Italian Renaissance nobles. It is believed that a Neapolitan nobleman who died in 1586 at the age of 48 suffered from chronic inflammation of the gallbladder due to goldstones. In addition to forming goldstones, Escherichia coli can cause food poisoning, diarrhea, urinary tract infections, and pneumonia. Escherichia coli is also known to be resistant to antibiotics, giving it the name superbug. The research team explained that the full evolutionary history of the bacterium remains a mystery, including when it acquired resistance to antibiotics. This is yet to be found out. Tax documents and shopping lists. The Egyptian mummy of Chatting Stone Castle in Kent has long been a mystery to experts. In order to read the name of the deceased, it was necessary to unfold the burial whale of strips of papyrus pages, which was impossible without damaging the mummy. In 2017, researchers developed a scanning method that allowed the hidden text to be read without harming the mummy. The 3,000-year-old mummy of a man named Ayer Tirori. Used papyrus was used to form the mummy's wrappings, but the text on it obscured by putty and plaster, so the contents remained unknown for centuries. During the scan, scientists saw, in addition to the name, records of the life of the Egyptians, including tax documents and shopping lists. China kept secret discovered 12th century frigate. The find led to the emergence of a Museum of Underwater Archaeology in China. In 1987, the British firm Maritime Exploration was looking for the wreck of the Dutch East India Company in the South China Sea, but instead came across a 30-meter merchant ship dating from the Southern Song period, 12th century. Divers reported that the sunken ship, judging by the amount of cargo, was at the very beginning of its journey. The wreck was nicknamed Nanhai No. 1 because it was the first find off the coast of the city of the same name. A layer of silt, 2 meters thick, contributed to the preservation of the wooden hull and cargo, including porcelain, sun coins, and silver bars. The lack of investment and suitable technology meant that Nanhai No. 1 remained untouched on the seabed until 2002. All this time it was watched by the Chinese naval forces. The military stopped local fishermen from fishing on the site, claiming that there were still active bombs from the Second World War on it. Only in December 2007, the Nanhai No. 1 and its precious contents, with a total weight of 15,600 tons, were finally lifted from the bottom and transferred to the Silk Road Maritime Museum in Guangdong on Hailing Island, which was built specifically to accommodate the sunken ship. 
It became the first museum of underwater archaeology in China. Nanhai No. 1 has been placed in a custom-made seawater tank, and to prevent rotting and damage to the ship, it is covered with silt and kept at a stable temperature. Under these carefully controlled conditions, archaeologists have continued to study the wreck ever since. For example, in 2018, scientists established the dates of a sea voyage. One of the jars was dated 1183. Earlier, the Colombian military showed photos from the sunken frigate of the 18th century. The ship has not yet been explored, but perhaps its raising will inspire the Spaniards to create their own underwater museum. The Black Book of Camarthen The oldest manuscript that mentions King Arthur and Merlin is the Black Book from Camarthen. The book is considered a collection of poems from the 9th 12th centuries. In 2015, the pages were examined with UV light and photo editing. To the delight of the researchers, they found something invisible to the naked eye. Among the lines were hidden human faces and poems. Also, in the margins, medieval readers, mostly at the end of the 16th century, made notes. The manuscript is the earliest manuscript written in Welsh around 1250 AD. It was probably created by a single author who collected poems about Welsh folk stories and legends from the Dark Ages. But the Black Book's greatest significance is how it demonstrates that even well-researched manuscripts can provide a wealth of new information. The Grave of a Man from Myth A significant part of the scientific community denies the very existence of the Aztatlan culture. In the Mexican city of Mazatlan, repairmen accidentally discovered ancient human remains. The work was immediately stopped so that the employees of the National Institute of Anthropology and History of Mexico carried out archaeological excavations. According to archaeologist Victor Joel Santos Ramirez, rescue coordinator, the area is a natural high hill near the mouth of the Alkalites River. In the pre-Hispanic times, people settled there in order, on the one hand, to live near the river and use its resources, and on the other, to avoid seasonal flooding. Part of the surface of the hill was covered with crushed shells, but under this impromptu floor was a human burial. It is definitely unusual. Let's start with the fact that archaeologists have found the remains of only one person. That is, this is not a cemetery, not a place for regular burials. At the same time, three fragmented ceramic vessels of rather fine workmanship and a smoking pipe were found in the burial. The preservation of human remains is very poor due to local climatic conditions. The found burial, therefore, strongly stands out from the local burial tradition. Mexican archaeologists have suggested that they have found the tomb of Aztatlan, a man from Aslan, the mythical homeland of the Aztecs. In general, today there is no evidence that Aslan had ever existed anywhere other than myth. In the scientific community, it is perceived as something between Atlantis and Camelot, but they are looking for it with undying persistence, including for political reasons. Scholars agree that the Aztecs roamed North America for a long time before founding Tenochtitlan in 1325, and around the same time the emergence of the legend of Aslan is attributed. The myth do not contain exact indications of where it was, it is only clear that north of Tenochtitlan. The description is also rather poor, a small island in a lake inhabited by herons. Based on these frankly poor signs, at the end of the 19th century, Mexican historians announced that Aslan was located on Mescal Titan, a small island in mangrove swamps. Grave of Tolis Shad in 2017, a stone monument dedicated to a powerful man and the struggle for power was found in the Mongolian steppe. It consists of 14 pillars arranged around a 1,300-year-old sarcophagus, which is now empty. Like columns, it is covered with Turkic inscriptions documenting data about some person. In the centuries before Genghis Khan, the influence of this man was second only to the ruler. 
the Kagan Bilge Khan Bogu ruled the Eastern Turkian Khaganate in 716-734. It was written on the pillars that the deceased owned the title of Yagbu. After the poisoning of Bilge, the men received the position of Tole Shad, ruler of the East. This assassination is mentioned in historical records, and it is not clear if the Vesegerent was featured in it. Thousands of mummies in one place. The Capuchin Catacombs are the world-famous burial dungeons in Palermo, Sicily, southern Italy. There are more than 8,000 mummified bodies of people who died between the 17th and 19th centuries. Today, the Capuchin Catacombs are one of the main attractions of Palermo. In 1599, the Capuchin monks made a shocking discovery during the exhumation of bodies that were removed from the catacombs under the monastery in Palermo. Many of the bodies were naturally mummified. Features of the soil and microclimate prevented the decomposition of the bodies. After this discovery, the monks decided to mummify one of their dead, Silvestre of Gabio, by placing the deceased in the catacombs. Soon, the bodies of the dead monks and even noble citizens of Palermo began to be demolished in the catacombs. Later, the catacombs became a kind of status symbol. It was considered prestigious to be buried in the Capuchin catacombs. The bodies were first dehydrated by laying them on racks of ceramic pipes in the catacombs for eight months, and then washed with vinegar. Some bodies were embalmed, while others were placed in airtight glass cabinets. The monks were buried in their daily clothes. Some of the dead wrote walls specifying what clothes they should be buried in. Some even asked to have their clothes changed several times a year according to the latest fashion. Relatives went to the catacombs to pray for the dead and keep their bodies in a presentable condition. Capuchin monks took money for the maintenance of huge catacombs from relatives of the dead. During World War II, American bombers accidentally hit the monastery, causing many of the mummies to be destroyed. Today, about 8,000 bodies and 1,252 mummies can be found along the walls of the catacombs. The holes are divided into seven categories – men, women, girls, children, priests, monks, and scholars. Mini Bibles During the 13th century, thousands of mini Bibles were produced to carry in your pocket. The tiny books were made using technology that was hitherto unknown. Although the pages were made of leather, they were stunningly thin and were claimed to have been made from fetal calf skin. But the number of books made this impossible. The researchers suggested that rabbits, rats, and squirrels were the sources of leather for the books. But it turned out that the pages were made not from the skin of rodents, but from the skin of cows, goats, and sheep. It solved one of the biggest mysteries of the pre-press era the Bible was written by hand. Although some of the skin may indeed have been taken from unborn animals, this has not been confirmed for most of the books. This raised the question of how pages that were tough enough to last 800 years could be so thin. Some were 0.3 mm thick. But by the time medieval sources began to record the methods of creating pages, the process had already been lost. The world's first fossilized navel of a dinosaur Dinosaurs are usually depicted as majestic, almost fantastic creatures. It is almost impossible to imagine that they really existed in the real world, walked on the same earth as people. However, scientists have discovered a unique fossil that instantly makes dinosaurs a little more alive. It turns out that ancient reptiles had the equivalent of a navel, recently studied the first known fossil of such a mark. Let me remind you that in humans and other mammals, the navel remains after the umbilical cord that connected in the womb with the mother's placenta falls of the newborn. Dinosaur embryos did not have umbilical cords, and they developed inside the egg, not in the female's abdomen. The embryo was attached directly to the yolk sac of its egg, and nutrients entered the body of the embryo through a slit-like opening in the abdominal cavity. From this gap, a long, thin umbilical scar remained, which remained on the skin throughout the life of the dinosaur. The species which drew the attention of an international team of paleontologists was discovered back in 2002 and has since been exhibited at the Senckenberg Museum in Germany. 
The fossilized skin belonged to a Cetacosaurus, a herbivorous dinosaur about 2 meters long that lived on Earth 130 million years ago. The specimen was found in China, and until recently, no one noticed the navel on it. The researchers found the scar on the petrified skin using a relatively new technique called laser-induced fluorescence imaging. So scientists identified the characteristic scales surrounding the long umbilical scarf Cetacosaurus. Similar scars can be seen in some modern lizards and crocodiles. The terrible face of an ancient man Scientists have figured out what an ancient human ancestor looked like a Cro-Magnon man whose skeleton was discovered in the Isis cave in France. The face of the Cro-Magnon turned out to be truly creepy. As it turned out, he suffered from neurofibromatosis, a genetic disease that causes massive growth of benign tumors. They covered the entire face of the ancient man. The skeleton of Cro-Magnon I, a member of the species Homo sapiens who lived about 28,000 years ago, was discovered in 1868 in the Isis cave in the French region of Dordogne in southwestern France. By the 150th anniversary of the discovery, scientists decided to re-examine the remains restoring the appearance of a Cro-Magnon man. Cro-Magnons are the ancient ancestors of men. The remains were first discovered in the middle of the 19th century in the Dordogne region in the Cro-Magnon cave, from which they got their name. The Cro-Magnons found by scientists lived on Earth 10,000-35,000 years ago and were the first of the ancestors of modern men, whose remains were discovered by scientists. Marriage Contract Around 4,000 years ago, a couple etched their marriage contract in clay. When this clay tablet was found in 2017 at the Kiltepe Khanis archaeological site in Turkey, it soon became clear that most of the contract involved children. An Assyrian couple, Lakipum and Haytala, agreed to try to produce their own offspring within two years. In case that there would be no children, then the wife had to find a surrogate mother. More specifically, Haytala had to buy a female slave for her husband. After the birth of the child, child, Lakipum was allowed to sell the mother if he wanted to. The contract is the oldest to mention surrogacy and infertility, although in a slightly different light than today. While this reflects the ancient belief that infertility was the wife's fault, the contract covered a divorce as well. The person who initiated the divorce had to pay the, the other person five measures of silver. Rate this video with your thumbs up or down and subscribe to the channel, and I will not disregard any of all your kind comments. Thanks for your views, bye everyone!